Planifolia, Pompono, and Tajisisin. All right, we grow Planifolia mainly. All right, most of the vanilla you get inside the store comes from the Planifolia variety. All right, so places that grow that, Mexico, Madagascar, Indonesia, places in Africa, China, that's the majority of vanilla, all right, right there. All right, now we have Pompono. Now Pompono has no commercial value whatsoever. So it's pretty much just a show flower. Has no flavor, has no smell, nothing. All right, third one is Tahitisin, which is only grown in Tahiti. So Tahiti and flavored beans, and people ask me, what's the difference between your beans and theirs? Or you know, the unique thing about ours, is they come from Hawaii. That's a cool thing. <laughs> All right, but we grow the Planifolia variety. So if you get yours from Mexico or you get yours from Madagascar, they're gonna be the same. Very very similar flavors. All right, only if they come from Tahiti, then you'll get a very large flavor flavor difference. They have a more floral and richer flavor to them. So that's the only difference in Tahiti. Uh, our beans and you know, Tahiti. Tahiti is the only one that grows a specialty. Now, um, vanilla itself, the unique thing, can only be grown 25 degrees north of south of the equator. Right? We're on the 19th degree of that line. So you get Mexico, Madagascar, Indonesia, Tahiti, Africa, the places in China, um, Spice Isles, Puerto Rico, a bunch of places grow. Now the thing about that belt around the world, it's kind of the hot spot, you know, very hot. We get, we get sun and we get rain. What we need. No one likes a rainforest climate. Not too much sun, not too much rain. Alright? Just like that. Alright, so next, so vanilla itself is not native to Hawaii. It actually the birthplace is Mexico. It's about an hour's drive south from Mexico City, there's a little town called Papantla. And that is the birthplace of vanilla. Way back when the French and the Spanish were first coming to colonize North America at the time. They saw the Tontinac Indians using you know, jewelry. They put it in their ears, they put it in their huts, because it smelled very nice. So they liked the smell, and they liked that. But their chief, he drank a drink called Chocolatol. He drank 25 glasses of it each day in a different golden goblet each time he drank it. And he split vanilla beans, and he threw them inside there, and he drank it like that. Right? So that's kind of like the first flavor experience of that. Right? So the French get a hold of it. They start planting at 25 degrees north of south of the equator. So that's where you get Tahitian vanilla. Now, people ask me, what is French vanilla? Now, French vanilla is actually just an ice cream flavor. It's actually an ice cream recipe. All right, now, the thing about this ice cream recipe, if you use Planifolia beans in making the French vanilla ice cream, it's not considered French vanilla. It's just regular vanilla ice cream. It has to have Tahiti and beans to make French vanilla. So, if you look at the label, if it says French vanilla, and you look at the label, it says Planifolia beans, it's not actually French vanilla. But if it does say Tahiti and beans, then it's French vanilla. All right, so, Madagascar, so uh, Madagascar produces 90% of the world's vanilla. Right? And I also said 90% of the world's vanilla is fake, so you can kind of do the math on that one. But um, if you've been keeping up with the price of vanilla, it's gone up a lot in the past couple of years. All right, so three years ago, uh, the vanilla places, so 90% of the world's vanilla comes from Madagascar. All right? So they got hit by a monsoon and a virus, taking on the majority of their fields. So that put the whole entire world on a back stock, all right? And the United States is the world's largest consumer of vanilla. So in the past three years, vanilla's price has gone up by 600%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a pound of vanilla beans, which ranges from like 100 beans, give or take, uh, used to go from $300 to $600, now goes from $600 to $1,700. Yeah. Very, very expensive stuff. So it's a great time to get into the business. <laughs> but that's the totally plant too. itself needs to be mature, right? So maturity, from baby plant to maturity, is four years. Right. Four years, then we'll be like, okay, it can produce beans. All right. Once we see that you know it's healthy enough, what we'll do is we'll stress the plant. All right. So you see this new trumpet coming up there, that new leaf right there? Mm -hmm. We'll snip that off. We'll snip that off, and we'll also cut off the water supply at the same time. So try and cut off as best as we can. And since it's shocked to the whole entire plant, saying I'm dying, I need to remove this. All right. So so it'll start to send clusters out, and we'll see those flowers. Turn back on the water supply, make this plant as healthy as possible, and give it energy to feed the flowers. Once the flowers come out, they only open for one day, four hours in that day. You have to pollinate it in that time. Mm -hmm. Pollinate it, and eventually, from the stem of the flower, grows the bean. And you stay on here for another four months, we'll mature, and we'll take them off, dry them, cure them. That takes another four months after that. So, as I said, it takes around four years and eight months. You get the whole entire process. And after that drying process, that's when we can put the beans inside. So how do, you, how do you keep track of each plant's four-hour window? We tag them. 
So these orange usually mean they have flowers and beans on them. So we check them every single day. We have somebody walking through here. Okay. And most of the time when the flowers open, they'll open up during, you know, when the sun is at its highest. Because we're not up here at six o'clock in the morning, you know, pollinating flowers. Because it does get cold in Hawaii. Um, but flowers don't like to open up. Oh, my dad, <laughs> my dad, uh, out of it. nowhere, he just starts talking. He's like, okay, I'm gonna teach you how to pollinate. And like, he, he, he steps me through it. So it's very simple. I don't know how I forgot it, but it's very, very simple. So it's a five petal flower. There's a little pollen sack inside the middle. We'll take out that pollen sack, take out the pollen, and right underneath where the pollen sack was, there's a tiny flap. Pull that flap down, put the pollen in, push the flap back up, and the pollen falls to the stem of the flower, the flower closes. We call that the marriage of vanilla. Very romantic. Um, but that's, that's the whole entire process. That's the pollination.